All right, man, peace. So, brothers, there's an old saying that one man's trash is another man's treasure. We've all heard that slogan, that saying, that idiom many times throughout our lives, and it's very pertinent, especially in a situation like this. We've all been through situations. We've been through drama, quote-unquote, with people who just seem to be negative and then come to find out they were just negative around us. Or we've known people where we said to ourselves, wow, this is a very good person. We only see good characteristics or good attributes, but they only show it when they're around us. And then when they're around other types of people, the negative traits come out. Why is that? Because people are like different forms of energy. Sometimes you can vibe with a person, other times you cannot. And it's not just your significant other. It could be a family member, it could be your homeboy, it could be a colleague at work. Point being is this. Mr. DeMarcus Boogie Cousins has decided that he is going to sign with the Golden State Warriors. And the Warriors have a history of bringing the best out of people for whatever reason. Could it be their locker room chemistry, the atmosphere of the organization, or the fact that Steve Kerr knows how to handle people very well? And I put handle in quotes. Anyway, we're going to find out very soon because as we've seen in years past, they've been able to take other teams trash off the scrap heap, players like Nick Young, JaVale McGee, and take them to championships and have them play important roles on that magic carpet ride there. So we'll see if DeMarcus Cousins can be the next piece of quote-unquote trash off of the scrap heap to win a championship with the Warriors. So of course you're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. You can't, you cannot beat LA, ask LeBron, but the good words tonight, of course, this afternoon, Molly, are boogie Cousins. Oh, you know words. it. Let's get into it. And obviously, I'm holding things down here in Bristol, guys. So we begin with the Warriors, who once again are living up to their mantra, strength in numbers. Golden State reminding everybody there is levels to this, people. The Warriors came out of nowhere and agreed to sign DeMarcus Cousins to a one-year $5.3 million deal. This Let me say this very quickly. I'm not giving the Golden State Warriors too much credit for signing DeMarcus Cousins. They're so far ahead of the pack in regards to their understanding of the game of basketball, just from their core, their root players, that being Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green, that they can pretty much add anyone, I mean, within reason, and know that that person is not going to throw off their overall balance, their team chemistry. It's the equivalent of a boxer fighting 10 rounds and winning all 10 rounds and then going for the knockout in the 11th round. They're not being particularly bold. As a matter of fact, they're being the opposite. They're only daring to commit a certain exploit because they know that they have the fight in the bag. The Golden State Warriors know they can sign a DeMarcus Cousins, and if he acts up at any point in the season, they can cut him and eat the contract. This according to our Adrian Wojnarowski, Cousins told the undefeated Mark Spears that he was confused and hurt, that he had no offers. Well, most people with no self-awareness are confused and hurt when things that everyone else knows are going to happen to them actually transpires. Much like a Carmelo Anthony, DeMarcus Cousins is another player in the NBA who is very talented, but lacks self-awareness. And oftentimes, that's due to how they were raised. When you grow up in a strong family environment, the first thing that your parents should be teaching you is about your self-awareness. You have to know who you are. You have to know where you are. You have to know how to conduct yourself based off of where you are and who you're around. DeMarcus Cousins has never received that memo. That is why he has consistently acted a fool in every NBA city for every team that he's ever played for. And now that he's had what is widely considered the most debilitating injury that an NBA athlete can have happen to them, that being a torn Achilles tendon, he's finally starting to understand how he's viewed all across the NBA. It's almost like a former supermodel who's had acid thrown in her face. Now you get to see who truly loves you for who you are. Even from the Pelicans, yesterday he called Bob Myers, the Warriors president of basketball operations, to discuss joining the squad. Now, Stephen A., let me just remind everyone, the Warriors have won three chips in the last four years. They get rid of JaVale McGee and scoop up Boogie Cousins. Well, I think that in the aftermath of the trade-off of JaVale McGee for DeMarcus Cousins, one may be able to rightly conjecture that they let JaVale McGee go because they knew that they were going to sign DeMarcus Cousins. What do you make of Cousins falling to Golden State? Uh, what I make of it is that there's a whole bunch of punks running around the NBA, and they're called NBA fans. 
I don't know what the hell is wrong with everybody. I really, really don't. Um, everybody's acting like this is such a big deal. It's really not that big of a deal. Well, then, Stephen A. Smith, why did you broadcast a video clip of you saying that the rich got richer and you looked as exasperated as any of the NBA fans that you're currently castigating? Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. At least not yet. Let me explain. DeMarcus Cousins is a stud. I'm not taking anything away from him. The brother averaged 25 and 13 and 5 last year. When Stephen A. Smith, look, you can try to twist it and turn this storyline however you want to turn it. DeMarcus Cousins is 6 feet 11. He can play defense and he's extremely skilled on offense. This has officially taken away any possible chance that any other team in the NBA could possibly have had to defeat the Golden State Warriors barring catastrophic injury. The only weak spot in the Golden State roster was in the middle. That was it. Now they have one of the top five big men in the NBA. I say top five right now because coming off of an Achilles tendon tear, I cannot put him as the number one big man or even top two. But due to the fact that he was never really an explosive athlete to begin with, I don't think that it's going to hurt him as much as it would a more explosive athlete, say if he was a small guard, a shooting guard, or a wingman who needed that explosiveness. But he's never been anyone who jumped out of the gym anyway. So I think that by January, February, he should be somewhere around approximating the player that he was, depending on how well he, he rehabilitates himself and how well his Achilles tendon heals when he was healthy we get this but understand that the injury that he sustained is a 12 to 15 month process before you can even start playing basketball again allegedly that doesn't even bring into to, to, to play the fact that you've got to get the rust off of you you've got to get yourself in the playing shape that's why the golden state warriors are the perfect team for him to be on you've got to be able to do some of the things you're going to be able to do the Warriors have no risk here. You have a situation where JaVel McGee, Mr. Shaq and the Fool himself, is no longer with the team. You got Pajulia. You got Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. DeMarcus Cousins wouldn't even be a top three offensive option on the Golden State Warriors. And well, coming off of an Achilles tendon tear, he won't even be a top five option. When he comes back, they're going to work him into the lineup very slowly. And that's when he's healthy. So now that he's not healthy and he has to get himself back into shape, you got to understand that the Golden State Warriors are hopeful that he could give them something. But if he can't give them anything, he only cost them $5.3 million. He's not going to disrupt their locker room. My sources tell me every player, along with all the coaches and ownership, were aligned on this together. They had no problem bringing them on board because of the upside. There is no downside. They're not taking any risk. But at the same time, there's limited expectations. What to expect from him because of this? I wouldn't go that far, Stephen A. Smith. Limited has to be put in quotes. And it's certainly subjective. The expectations for Boogie Cousins is that he's going to be an active participant on both offense and defense. And after he comes back, they're going to eventually and incrementally build up his minutes. Because they are going to need him in the playoffs. At the very least, he's going to be expected to provide an intimidation factor in the middle on defense, which is something that they really have not had since Andrew Bogut. The severity of an Achilles injury. And Max Kellerman, I'll throw it to you by asking a, a, a relatively rhetorical question. How was the great Kobe Bryant after his Achilles injury? Well, that's a rather ridiculous question, Stephen A. Smith, as I've already stated earlier on in this video. There was a lot more explosiveness expected from Kobe Bryant than what you will expect from a DeMarcus Cousins. Even though, as we all know, DeMarcus is carrying around a lot more weight, he's never been an explosive athlete in the first place. When Kobe Bryant lost his explosiveness, he pretty much was of no use in the NBA anymore because he was not a player who knew particularly well how to play within a system other than the triangle. And even in the triangle, he needed to be explosive to offset a lot of the clogged paint that you would have when you have a player like a Pau Gasol that dominates in the low post. There was pretty much nothing for Kobe to do after he came back from his Achilles tendon tear. He just was not the same player anymore. As a matter of fact, when you go through the annals of the NBA, pretty much the only player to come back and even resemble mildly what he was before the Achilles tear was Dominic Wilkins. Isaiah Thomas' career was finished after he tore his Achilles, as was Shaq's. That Achilles tendon tear is a major, major, major injury. But DeMarcus Cousins, of any of the players who have suffered that injury before him, 
is probably in the best position to come back and even mildly resemble what he was before that other than Dominique because of his style of play. He's not an explosive athlete and he plays in the low post for the most part anyway. And when he does go on the outside, he's taking long set shots. Keep in mind we're talking about somebody, keep in mind we're talking about somebody about five inches shorter, about 70 to 80 pounds lighter. Whose game is completely different. And this man had a tough time re recovering from an Achilles injury. But no, not really. Kobe did not have a tough time recovering from his Achilles injury. He never recovered from the Achilles injury because he was never the same. He became the worst player in the National Basketball Association by his last year in the league. He was the worst player in the NBA. That's what he was. But we think that DeMarcus Cousins, who, why, why, why you think no one called for him? It's not because he can't play. We and Kobe Bryant's stupid fans, please don't jump in my comments trying to go back and forth and getting aggravated because of what I said. Because I will pull the stats on you, okay? <laughs> That man shot 30% his last year in the league. It was a big joke. We know he's a stud. It's because of the injury, the type of injury that he had, and because of it, people speculating that he wouldn't even be available for the entire regular season, and you'd be lucky to have him by May. So everybody running around acting like, oh my God, they got DeMarcus Cousins from the nation's capital to my family and loved ones there, to Atlanta, Georgia, all the way out here west. Uh, yeah, every, oh my God, it's just not fair. Right, but Negro, you're the one who made the video saying the same thing. So what are you talking about, man? Ian is canceled with his weak self and, uh, and put Adam Silver in a Golden State Warriors jersey as if, as if it's his fault. It's nonsense. It's a complete overreaction. Enos Cantor is a master social media troll. That's what he is. DeMarcus Cousins is a stud when healthy. He ain't healthy. That's why it doesn't really matter right now. Right, but Stephen A. Smith, what are you really saying? We know that the Golden State Warriors are going to the playoffs. By the playoffs, he will be a force. So when people make the evaluation of the DeMarcus Cousins acquisition, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about October 31st, game one of the regular season. Well, I think it matters. Uh, obviously, you're not getting prime DeMarcus Cousins all season. In fact, it might work out even better for the Warriors this way because Cousins won't be ready to go at earliest until most of the season is gone. Then he has the rest of the regular season to get himself into game shape. And then, he, then you have DeMarcus Cousins for the playoffs, Steve May. Draymond Green shoots 38% from three. You know why? Because they know no one near him when he's shooting the three because of Steph and Clay and now KD. Boogie Cousins is a better natural shooter than Draymond Green. Absolutely. When they have Boogie Cousins out there on the floor, what that does is that allows them to leave their Hamptons 5 lineup on the bench if that's what they want to do. They could play Boogie Cousins with the second team. They can intermix him with the first team. You have him on the floor with Steph and KD or Steph and Clay, And then you have three players out there who can make the three, and for the first time, they'll have a five man who's actually a big man that can stroke the three. Unbelievable acquisition. And there won't be anyone within a country mile of him if and when they play five out. All they need from Boogie Cousins by the time the playoffs roll around is what, 18 good minutes? Now, his game was never predicated on athleticism anyway. He's not fast, he doesn't jump high, he does it with obviously great dexterity he has natural ability that way in order to have skills as finely tuned as his you had to put in that work absolutely and he's smart he processes information quickly and makes smart decisions that uh, i can't agree with you there sir <laughs> you say he's smart he's able to receive information with alacrity and beyond that he makes good decisions i don't see that one sir i think that it's going to be a growth process for him once he joins that Golden State Warriors roster where they're going to have to break him in very similar to how they broke in Kevin Durant and tear him away from a lot of those bad habits that so many great individual players in the NBA have in regards to their inability to see the game on a macrocosmic level. It's going to take a minute. That's the kind of ball he plays. He's less reliant on athletic ability than others. Now, the Achilles point is true. Adrian Peterson fooled everyone into thinking that just anyone can come back from catastrophic injury like that and be the same. In the NBA, the only superstar who came back and still had greatness in him after that injury that I can think of is Dominique Wilkins. And the reason that's it. 
reason I know that is because when it happened to Kobe Bryant, that's all we talked about on LA radio for about a year, right? Like, well, how can Kobe get back? Will he ever be the same? And of course, the answer was no. But if the Warriors have just 18, 15, 18 good minutes from DeMarcus Cousins in the playoffs, then the best team in basketball just got, on offense at least, completely unguardable and even more ridiculous. Absolutely, and beyond that, DeMarcus Cousins is an excellent passer for his position. He's averaging five assists a game at center. So you're talking about a guy who can see the floor very well, who can pass out of the high post, he can pass off the top of the key, he can pass well out of the low post. That is going to ease a lot of tension in their offense, especially when they have those games where KD and Steph are not making their outside shots. I just don't see how anyone can believe that this is not a great acquisition. I'm not disputing. Unless Stephen A. Smith is just trying to contrive an argument so that he has something to go back and forth with Max Kellerman about. Disputing that. What I'm saying to you, Max, is this: there's a lot of ifs in your arguments. They're, val- they're valid ifs. I'm not questioning that. But the fact that there's so many ifs, doesn't it annoy you to the umph degree that you got a whole bunch of folks who are supposed to be rough riders are out here crying and whining about Boogie Cousins or the Golden State Warriors when we don't even know if the man going to play before May? I mean, He doesn't need to play before May, Stephen A. Smith, but I guarantee you he will be. I guarantee you that Boogie Cousins will be back before the All-Star break. I promise you that. Because the way in which players are able to rehab off of serious injuries right now and then the fact that he's not going to be asked to come back and be a superstar. He'll be back by January or February. They're going to give him anywhere from five to eight minutes in his first outing and then incrementally build it up depending on what they see in practice and during the games. I mean, doesn't that Stephen A., if he's going to be healthy, no. though, he's going to be a problem. Five all-stars on that team. Whoa, 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 he's going to be whoa. motivated coming back from injury. Hold on, hold on, Molly. Yeah. Hold on, Molly. Hold on. Ali, there's a retort to that. Okay. Number, number one, because it's the Achilles, I just highlighted, if he's ready is a big question mark. Mm-hmm. Number two, he still ain't even the, the third offensive option. He doesn't need to be Stephen A. Smith. So what does that tell you about how potent their team is going to be? Once again, no pun intended, but the only Achilles heel for the Golden State Warriors over the past four seasons was that they were perceived as being weak in the middle. Even when Andrew Bogut was there. Even though he was a great force on defense, offensively he was seen as a liability. And after he left, they were seen as a team that you could penetrate and break them down by taking them to the cup, trying to draw fouls on their stars because you knew that they had no real shot blocker in the middle. Now with Boogie Cousins there, they have no weaknesses. None. Do you know that they told the Warriors told him before bringing him on board yesterday? Did you know that the Warriors told him, look, man, don't expect more than about five to seven shots a game. I mean, you, you see what we have. We don't need but so much from you. They already told him that. So, Stephen A. Smith, what does that tell you? That should tell you that they're going to have such a surplus of riches that should the game or the event come where all three of their great shooters are not performing well, He's going to be allowed to take more shots. And you have a player who over the last five seasons has probably averaged 24, 25 points a game in Boogie Cousins as your fifth offensive option. I mean, come on. He's great when he's the yeah, number one or number two Stephen offensive a, option. Stephen A., he's versatile, he's, he's a good fourth passer, option. he can create his own shot. Stephen A. Smith, how could he be a lesser option at four than he would have been had he been forced to be the number one option? We know what he's been as the number one option. He's been a player who's never made the playoffs. Shots for other people. He's, he's he can, actually he the can. best thing he does is pass. He's a brilliant. He's, he's a brilliant. He has size. Big man I've ever he seen. has bulk with game. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Last y'all. comment, Stephen A. Then we got to move forward. Hey, 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 y'all, yeah. hey, y'all. Wait a minute. He's a brilliant passer. Yeah. Have you seen the Warriors pass? I mean, my God, they already could do everything Rich that got he richer. does. So yeah, what that's is the more point. Hey, hold up. Time out. It's more to say. Time out. That's that's the point. The things that the Warriors do well. Some of the offensive things. Boogie Cousins does well, but he's almost seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. So now the Warriors' so-called small ball lineup, the lineup of death, if and when Boogie gets healthy, is still small ball, but with small guys. Ding. That's exactly the point. Now they no longer have to run out that so-called Hamptons 5 lineup in desperate situations. They can actually mix and match now. Now they have a player in DeMarcus Cousins who can go head-to-head with Capella and wear him down on the defensive end. 
there's no way that they're going to play a playoff series in the playoffs maybe until they get to Boston that even has a chance of going beyond five games there's no way that way is big. KD is big. It's Boogie's too many big. basketball. It's too many we basketball. We only got too 90 basketball. minutes, but fellas. No. Come on. Stop whining. Stop whining. Right, so whining. Let's just say everybody's got an opinion, right, on this DeMarcus Cousins move, and it's getting mixed reviews. Stephen A. alluded to it, and you know Enos Kanter always down for a good time on social media, posting this image on Twitter with the caption, Adam Silver has agreed to a mid-level extension with Golden State League sources. Tell me. So, Max... Looks like he went and put Adam Silver's head on Steph Curry's body. Enos Cantor better watch himself. Adam Silver make a call and have his ass deported back to Turkey. Next thing you know, he'll be in a basement about to be tortured. <laughs> Max, obviously we know he's just playing, but in all seriousness, do you think this move is good or bad for the association? It's neither. I mean, if I have to say which one it is, it's good. Other teams need to get their game up. I will say that the move is not good overall for the league. Because if you were to ask me if the Golden State Warriors were to meet up with the Boston Celtics, both teams fully healthy in next year's finals, before this Boogie Cousins acquisition, I would have stated that I wouldn't call it necessarily a pick em series, but I would give the Golden State Warriors a very, very, very slight advantage over the Boston Celtics. Now with this Boogie Cousins acquisition, I think that that's probably a six-game series for the Warriors. Look, the Warriors are run brilliantly. I don't think that this is a no-risk move, Stephen A., because you're bringing in a guy with, who does, throughout his career, want the ball, and because he is so excellent on offense, the temptation is to give him the ball, right? And, and then run your offense through him as a big. So it's not like there's no upside. That there's That's a great clip that they're showing right there, because once again, the New Orleans Pelicans were one of the few teams that showed any signs of being a threat to the Houston Rockets during the regular season. And that was because of the potency of DeMarcus Cousins and what he was able to provide on both the offensive and defensive ends for that team. No risk because the war And interestingly enough, it was recently revealed that allegedly Anthony Davis told the New Orleans Pelicans front office that he did not want DeMarcus Cousins back. So of course, when the Golden State Warriors do finally meet up with the Pelicans, most likely sometime late in the season, it will be very interesting to see what the reception for DeMarcus Cousins will be in New Orleans or how he and Anthony Davis greet one another. Warriors already function nearly perfectly. You're That's assuming that the story is true. You're bringing in an X factor, but the point is the Warriors are brilliant at taking calculated risks. Steph Curry was the seventh pick, Clay the 11th, Draymond the 35th. That's the second round. Be I don't think that those were necessarily calculated risks. I think that a lot of those players really just fell into their laps because Steph Curry was a number one overall draft pick option. He truly was. He was a player who easily could have went number one in the draft. He's the modern day Pistol Pete Maravich. There are only two players, as far as I can remember, who've led both the NCAA in scoring for a season and the NBA, and that's Steph Curry and Pistol Pete Maravich. Klay Thompson was a player that you could say kind of, sort of, fell under the radar, but Draymond Green was probably the best player in the Big Ten while he was at Michigan State and for whatever reason he fell maybe because he wasn't truly great at anything he was just good at everything but I don't think that those draft picks were necessarily that difficult to make once those players fall into your lap because by the way they had Mark Jackson everyone's coming along they took a risk by getting rid of Mark Jackson they felt the offense was stagnant there weren't enough they, they were like dead last in passing they bring in Steve Kerr that was a risk they take off. Even Andre Iguodala at the time, four years, $12 million a year. Why didn't someone else give him a better deal than that? They bring on it. They make smart decisions. They take calculated risks. And as a result of the, the unselfish and excellent culture they've created, look at the way Steph Curry plays, who for years was their best. Other than Magic Johnson, I cannot think of another mega superstar in the history of the NBA who more superstar contemporaries who played during his time were more eager to play with than Steph Curry and Golden State. Just the fact that he was able to have a player of the caliber and on the level of a Kevin Durant be willing to come play with him shows you the type of teammate that Steph Curry is and how potent he is without the basketball in his hands. Because of that, other players want to play with him, like KD. Like Boogie Cousins on a mid-level exception. Absolutely. It's not that the Warriors are bad for the NBA, 
The Warriors are a model for the NBA. Right. And while Steph Curry is able to draw great talent onto his team, LeBron James can't attract a rat if he had a damn pot full of peanut butter. And the idea that people are crying that Adam Silver, they're, told, they're playing by the rules up and down, that Adam Silver should do something to break up the Warriors who only just drafted brilliantly, signed the right players, have the right culture, coach them up the right way. The fact that, that and, and by the way, who couldn't have had Billy Cousins? Someone offer him a deal. No one did, so the Warriors. Once again, it's because one man's trash is another man's treasure. The Golden State Warriors are probably the only team in the NBA who know for a fact that this dude is going to come onto this franchise and he's going to walk the straight and narrow path because if he doesn't, we're going to cut him so damn fast, he's not even going to know what happened to him. They know that for a fact. No other team in the NBA is willing to bring on a Boogie Cousins with a ruptured Achilles tendon. He's not worth much when he has that type of baggage. Just grabbed him. The crying about the Warriors is absurd. Why doesn't the rest of the league get their game up or at least emulate the Warriors? Well, the answer to the question is very, very simple. It's bad for the NBA. It's beautiful for Stephen A. Smith. Let me be, let me be the first to explain. <laughs> I love the fact that other teams are getting exposed for what's transpiring. You have a lot of people that are so busy trying to keep their job that they forget to do their job. That's not a problem for the Warriors. Right, but Stephen A. Smith, brother, it's easy for you to get on television and say that many of these other GMs all across the NBA are derelict in their duty because they did not sign a troubled center with a ruptured Achilles tendon by the name of DeMarcus Cousins. On what other team would he have fit as well as he does with the Golden State Warriors? The Lakers? You think that he would really be willing to go play with a LeBron James who holds the basketball as much as he does with a coach like Luke Walton who's not going to be able to control that situation? He pretty much landed on the perfect franchise for him. It's number one. Number two, the level of selflessness that is exhibited by the star players. Does it really, really get more unselfish, more unselfish than Steph Curry? No, brother, it really doesn't. And when you measure what Steph Curry is able to do with the basketball in concert with how few opportunities he now has to have the basketball in his hands, that only makes it shine even more what he brings to the team, not just skill-wise, but personality-wise, that he's willing to take a step back because he could have led the league in scoring for the last two seasons if he would have been a little bit more selfish and told Golden State's management, no, I don't want KD on my team. Then Kevin Durant, you know, we're talking about two elite players in the game of basketball who care about winning, who care about unselfishness, who care about themselves and their own humanity as human beings than they do than, than more so than they do about money or anything else. These guys are all about the right things. And when they are your leaders, combined with a fiery guy like Draymond Green, who never hesitates to keep somebody accountable, combined with somebody like Klay Thompson, who's a third wheel as, and, and universally recognized as one of the top five shooters in this game and one of the greatest shooters we have ever seen. And also one of the top defenders at his position. When you have that going on, everybody wants to come and play with you. It didn't escape me that a Boogie Cousins, for example, is in Golden State. It hasn't escaped me that God seemed more willing to want to play with a Kevin Durant than they might even mm. want to play with LeBron James. We're getting These into that kind of later. That I'm paying, I'm paying attention to. Well, it's about time that you started paying attention to it because I've been saying it for the last year and a half. Welcome aboard, brother. I've been saying for a long time that these players do not want to play with LeBron James, that Kevin Durant is much easier to play with because there's just more that he's willing to do in the overall framework of the offense than LeBron James is willing to do. And so when I look at the Golden State Warriors, to me what it comes down to is what Joe Lacob said in an article, I believe it was to the New York Times a few years ago. He said, we are the gold standard now. And no pun intended. And they have certainly proved it. <coughs> yeah, we can leave it there, guys. I just got to say one thing. I know we've had the Warriors compared to the Patriots, and you're going to call me a homer for this. I don't even feel like they're the Patriots anymore. I feel like they're UConn women's basketball at this point. That's how dominant this squad is going to be, in my humble opinion. We will leave. Well, we'll see. I'm not quite sure if I will put them on the level of UConn men's, I mean, women's basketball. 
they pretty much have a monopoly on that quote-unquote sport, even though I think they lost last year. I think the Nigerian girl beat them in the semifinals or the finals, one of those. I don't really follow female basketball, but I remember her hitting the shot and then Kobe Bryant meeting her on Ellen. Either way, the NBA is going to be far more competitive than women's college basketball. I definitely want to see how the Golden State Warriors fare against the Boston Celtics in the finals should both teams get there. But great acquisition by the Golden State Warriors picking up Boogie Cousins. Peace.